Hey everyone, it's Jack, and today I want to show you a video editor called Flowblade. Flowblade is a cool editor that I kind of came across the other day, and I thought I would share it with you, some of my experiences. As some of you might know, I already use Shotcut mostly as my main video editor because of the speed I can edit video files without having to cut the dead space manually with too many steps, such as Kaden Live is almost as good as Shotcut, but I find my production is a little bit faster in Shotcut, uh, just because there's an extra step that I have to do in Kaden Live to delete the empty spaces between videos. So can Flowblade even beat Shotcut in this? Well, let's find out. About a week ago, I downloaded Flowblade and I have been kind of playing with this a lot. And one thing I noticed is when you go into Flowblade, the first thing you got to do is you got to kind of change your mindset. Kind of like when you go into online business, you have a certain mindset and you have to change it in order to succeed. <laughs> and so it's kind of the same way with this video editor. Flowblade works a little bit differently than Caden Live and Shotcut. So you just got to kind of put it out of your mind that your workflow is going to go exactly the same way because we got to approach things a little bit differently. And I'm just going to kind of give you a quick basic tour. I also have a video that I grabbed from a parallel universe from another Jack who was doing a YouTube channel on how to make things. So I'm just going to open that up real quick. And Flowblade, all you need to do is just right click here in this area and then select add video or audio image. And so then I am going to go here and just grab this movie file here. And we'll kind of use this as our little example. So as you can see, it shows up here in our media layout here. And we have these different tabs here. So this these tabs kind of show us where we have our different filters and compositors, and render information and all that. Yes, this is cool. And here's where you can set your default name. Right now, it's just movie.mp4 by default. However, that's where you would change it. <laughs> okay, so we have our movie here, and down here is our timeline. So I'm going to just take this guy, and I'm just going to kind of drag it down in there. So as you can see, there I am. So this is a completely uncut version from my parallel reality. So nothing has been changed in here. So when you play it, you got all the pauses and the ums and everything else. Hey everyone, it's uh, uh, Fred? No, Bob? Wait, Frank? Uh, Lucille? Mildred? Julia? Ernie? Man, I can't remember Jack. Jack, that's it. It's Jack. And today I'm gonna show you how to make cubicle shaped bowling balls that roll just as smoothly as the spherical ones. Wow. So yeah. Hmm. I wish I could figure out how to make those. I guess my other me is pretty good at it. But anyway, <laughs> so as you notice, we got all these little things. And now if I was in my other video editor, which is Shotcut, and that would be this guy right here and Shotcut, I'm going to just kind of do a quick side by side comparison. So I got the video loaded here and I'm just going to drag it down into the timeline. So if I were going to stretch that out a little bit here, we got it in the timeline. You can see the thumbnail and all that. Again, if I were to play it, Hey everyone, it's uh, uh, it's the same one. And so like we got these pauses in here where I kind of forgot my name. And so if I was going to like delete some of this stuff out in Shotcut, like if I only deleted the empty space out right here, go over here and kind of select with my timeline pointer here, and then just press the S key for slice, and then come over to the other spot here and hit slice again, select this, and then press the X key, and it will automatically delete that space. That's kind of the same method I used in Caden Live as well except I couldn't delete the piece of clip and remove the space at the same time. So removing the space was an extra step there. So I, I found myself saving time in Shotcut by just hitting X and it would delete the clip and the space at the same time. So now if I came out all the way over to here and I hit S for slice, 
and then selected this, then hit my X key, then it took it all out in one fell swoop. Hey everyone, it's, uh, man, I can't remember Jack. Jack, that's it. It's Jack. There you go. And so then I would just further refine it by hitting slice again, S, select, and X. And now it's all fixed. One, it's, uh, it's Jack. And today I'm going to show you how to make cubicle shaped bowling ball. So that kind of gives you an idea how I do that in Shotcut. Now let's do the same thing in Flowblade and see if it can kind of stack up here. So I'll just switch on over to Flowblade and kind of do the same thing. So now in Flowblade, what I would do here is first I'm going to just kind of zoom in a little. So it's not so huge. There we go. And also you can see I have the thumbnails and in Flowblade, I really kind of like to remove the thumbnails. So you can do that by coming over here and then unchecking display clip media thumbnails. And then you'll have just this guy. If you want to turn that off, that's how you would do it in Flowblade. And here, so if I was going to find my spot, it's, uh, uh, so everyone, it's, uh, so let's say I would just want to remove this little silent spot here. All I got to do again, and this time is press the X key. The X key was, is going to be what's going to cut, make my cut here now. I'm going to go ahead and hit X. And then all I got to do is select this guy and just drag it back. And when I let up on the mouse button, it automatically takes it out and closes right in, which is really cool. It's a uh, uh, easy peasy. So that made it really fast. And so now if I come way down here, man, I can't remember Jack. Jack, that's it. It's Jack. And then I made my slice here using the X key. I can also delete it instead of just dragging it. I can just hit the delete key. And again, it fills it right in. And it's, uh, it's Jack. And today I'm going to show you how to, <laughs> and now you have the little, uh, right there. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's Jack. And just to do that simple little tweak. All I got to do is highlight here and just pull it back to that spot. And then when we play it, everyone, it, it's Jack. And today I'm going to, and I can even tweak it a little further by taking out the double it's. And it's Jack. And today, and now it looks actually pretty good. Everyone, it's Jack. And today I'm going to show you how to make. So. Yeah, I mean, to tweak and to delete is so much quicker in Flowblade. And that's one thing I really like. I can sit here and just kind of do a chop with my X key and then just slide that where I want it. And it instantly takes out the cut all in one fell swoop. And today I'm going to show you. It's Jack. And today I'm going to show you how to. So that is really cool. I really like that. And I'm actually edited a couple of videos using Flowblade and it has really significantly sped up my workflow. There were things I had to get used to though, because for example, adding effects and so forth is different than it is like say in Shotcut. Like in Shotcut, if I want to add like say a transition and I just want to fade from one scene to another, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of undo a couple parts here just to make that wider. And let's say I just wanted to transition here. I could actually kind of just drag this over and make a little more space. And then you probably won't see much of a transition, but I can just overlap these two guys and I got an instant fade in, fade out or instant transition here. Julia. So now Ernie, man, I can't remember Jack. Jack, that's it. And then you got like a kind of a seamless fade in right there it's done a little bit differently in here. So if I was going to fade in another part and let's say I just kind of cut this out and I just kind of dragged it over here in flow blade, you can't just kind of push it in because if you do, it's going to cut more of the previous clip out and then I'd have to kind of drag it back and, and then just kind of bring it in. So that's not something you want to do in flow blade. So to transition here, what I would do is 
I can select this guy, the clip behind it, and then the clip forward where I want to transition into. And then go up here to edit, add single track transition. And when I select that, then here's our dissolve, which is the default in Shotcut when you overlap. And of course, you can also select other types of transitions. For example, if you did a white transition, then you can select from all these different patterns like a burst, checkerboard, circle, cross cloud, tons of stuff, horizontal wipes, patches, a million different kind of things here. <laughs> and so like if I just did rings, I guess we can just try that for the heck of it. I never tried rings before. Right now, by default, that's doing about 30 frames, which I would assume is about a second. So if you want to make that shorter, like say 15, we could just type it in there, hit apply, and then it's going to render this transition clip on the fly. And now when we transition, hey, I'm going to cubicle shaped bowling balls. <laughs> we got that ring shape. I'm going to cubicle shaped bowling balls. Which is kind of cool. It would actually look cooler if it was transitioning from one scene to a completely different scene, like me outside rollerblading or something. It's a little less obvious, that ring effect, when you really got the same background there. But you kind of get the picture. So that's kind of how a transition is done there. And also, if you were going to do titling in Shotcut, if I was going to add a title in here, what I would do is uh, cut out a section of a clip. Let's use this clip here since it's already there. And I wanted to add a title in there. Then what I would need to do is go up here to filters and then add a filter and then I can do a search up here to be quicker and then use something like simple tech and then here it's got a time code by default so if I put my pointer over here then you can see the time code is in there but if I want to change it then I would just simply go into this area and then put something in there like my title and then here's where you can adjust your font and so forth and then to position it, you can simply just kind of move it around. You can size it up here right inside the window. And then just have your title right there. And there you go. And you got a title. <laughs> and that's totally different inside Flowblade. Oh, the other cool thing is, watch when I move this slider. It's very hard to get, you know, any kind of reaction with a video. Now, if I do the same thing in Flowblade, it will roll just as very fast. I can scrub that around. Now, I also got to say that Shotcut even reacts faster than it is in the video here, but it's running kind of slow because I got two editors open and I'm running OBS Studio in the background too. So there's actually a lot of stress going on with the GPU. <laughs> So really, Shotcut does actually perform a little bit better than that under real conditions. But even though Flowblade still is much faster when I run the scrubber back and forth. So for a title in Flowblade, what I would do is I would select an area. And let's say I also want to put a title just in this area. So I'll hit X here and just kind of chop out this piece here. Actually do a title or here, I don't have to chop anything out. Well, what I would do is go up here to this selection. This is the titler. I would go in here and you can see the text here by default. And then I would just type something. I guess I could stay with my title. And then you can select your color and your font size and all that right here. And it'll kind of adjust with it. Here you can set for bold. And this is italic. And so once you got a font size you like, you can also select your font out of here, which is Courier by default. But, you know, if I just wanted to do something else like Lucidia, B and H, then uh, there you go. And I can just drag the title and it's already sized for me. So I don't really have to go up there and resize it and all that. So that's kind of cool. And you can adjust your title right here inside the titler to position it. So I kind of like that too. And then once you do that, you would hit save title graphic. And typically I just leave it at the default. And then if I make a new title, I usually just overwrite it unless it's in the same video. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to close and now title is up here. 
So it saved it as a PNG file and I'm going to drag this down and we're going to put it on the second video track. And now I got my title and I'm going to go ahead and shorten that up a little bit because this is a super short video. And by default, the title is runs a little bit longer. So now if I had our title, we got it right there. And if I put my scrubber over it, you can see that, oh no, it's all black. What? <laughs> so what you got to do in Flowblade is you got to right click over your title and then select add compositor and a theme blend will work or blend. And when you hit that, then it will make this background transparent and then you can see the title again. And as you can see, it's in the position that I set it to, which I think is really cool. However, if I changed my mind and I wanted to move it, instead of moving it in the picture here, like you would in Shotcut, you come over here and move it. And it's not quite as precise using it this way, although you got to kind of estimate a little bit and just kind of tweak. So if I wanted that like right in the middle there, it takes a little bit more tweaking. So that's kind of something you really want to work out when you're making the title. But otherwise, that's how you would tweak it right there. And then you can see my titles right on top of the cubicle bowling ball. <laughs> and so that's how that would work with a title. And that also works exactly the same way if you were going to drag any other picture into this. Like if I was going to bring a lower thirds in or something like that, I would open the picture and then just drag it down onto another track or the same track and then put an affine blend on it and then it would overlap here. So easy peasy. One thing you want to keep in mind with Flowblade is that if you're going to put on something like, let's say an effect, you got to kind of approach it like it's not going to be like Caden Live. It's not going to be like Shot Cut. You got to think differently using Flowblade. But once you get into that set where you're thinking differently, it really is fast. And just the time I save on cutting out the dead spots with this feature that it's got in Flowblade where you can just slice and then do something like that and you got an instant cut there. That just saves so much time, it's unbelievable. Especially when you have a 30 minute video or 20 minutes or whatever, and you need to cut out a lot of dead time. This is a great way to do it, or ums and things like that. Also, right now it's set for scrubbing, and that's done again over here by clicking on this little guy, and audio scrubbing is checked right now. I don't think that's checked by default, so typically when you launch this, audio scrubbing is off, and typically the thumbnails are on. I typically turn off the thumbnails because as you can see, it gets a little bit busy. The cool thing is the thumbnails are behind the waveform, so they're not really that intrusive. I think a couple of editions back, the thumbnail used to be in front. And so that was a little harder to work with, but having them in the back is pretty nice. So really the thumbnails, uh, not a big deal. It's just a matter of taste. And one thing I did notice, if you go in here, and let's say you want to fade out at the end of your clip. So I'll just check this. And to do a fade out, what I would do is go over here to edit and then add single track fade. So I'll hit that. And by default, we got fade in selected and it will fade to black. So we want to select fade out. And then let's shorten that up to say 10 frames. Then I'll just hit apply. And now it's gonna render the fade out. But what? Watch what happens when I do the fade out. Oh, it makes that noise. That's kind of bogus. <laughs> so yeah, that was one thing I noticed in Flowblade. I was like, what? Because that doesn't happen in Shot Cut or any other video editor I use. When I do a fade out, it just fades out. Uh, that was one thing that really kind of bugged me. But there is a workaround to this. And the workaround is you can go ahead and select the transition here or the fade and then right click on it. And then under mute, select mute audio. And then you got a silent fade out. That's how you do that. I'm not even sure if I'm accurate in calling that a workaround. That mute might be there for a reason. <laughs> and maybe I'm just missing something. 
So maybe there's some reason that noise is there. Maybe this one track fade out is used in some other capacity that I totally have no concept of. But for now, I think I'll just call it a workaround, right clicking on it and muting. And then if you decide you like that noise, then you can just simply unmute it and then you can hear the static again. So you get the best of both worlds. So yeah. That is kind of one thing you should be aware of with Blowblade. But for me, it definitely was not a deal killer at all. Like I said, the time I saved and everything else. And it's just fun to use. And it's very snappy. Everything just moves so fast. Another thing I noticed is when I render my video and I upload it to YouTube, it uploaded twice as fast. Yet the file size was the same. So I can't explain that. But yeah. Very, very quick uploads with my videos. <laughs> and to render, again, I can just hit the render tab and then select the folder where you want to save it and then give it a name. And my project settings here is set for a 1080p at 30 frames per second. And so here I would hit render to save this and this would render everything that we did. If you want your default project settings to be different, you can go in here to project and change project profile. And then here is where you can have your default settings differently. For example, if you want your default something else, let's say you're doing 4K <laughs> or the other way around, you want to do a 720p at 30 frames. Then you would have a 720 by 1280 video. And then of course you got all these other ones, HDV. So a lot of different choices here. All the way down to like SVCD, which I haven't seen in centuries. <laughs> NTSC standards, which is a broadcast standard for television. And so yes, a ton of choices. And then of course all your 4K settings here and 2K, uh, PAL. 8K, wow, UHD, 4K UHD, ultra high def. You can really go crazy here with your editing. Beautiful choices. And so I think that's just fantastic. Here you can also come up with a default profile name. You could kind of have everything with a new profile. So if I was changing this midstream, then I could go ahead and just save my project with the changed profile. However, I've already changed my profile. And I think it was 1920 by 1080 by default anyway. And back under your rendering options, uh, here's where you can set your encoding format. I forgot to show you that a little while ago. So if you don't want to use an MP4 with the H.264, you can go lossless. You can go with an MKV container, AVI, MOV files. You got other options in here that you can encode with. And then your audio settings, you can go here. By default, it's at 8000. Also up here in your edit, you got under preferences, you got your keyboard shortcuts. I know in Caden Live, I like setting keyboard shortcuts because I could delete spaces using a keyboard shortcut. And I use the letter C in Caden Live, which works for me. And that kind of speeds things up if I don't want to drag something over. Using that C key is kind of nice, especially if you have a really wide gap that might go off the frame. Keyboard shortcuts can be pretty handy. And if we go in here, we can see here we can define them or see what they are. And so we have a Flowblade default and we have a Premiere-ish style US keyboard. So if you're a Premiere user, then you can get keyboard shortcuts that are similar to those. So that's kind of cool too. I think I used Premiere maybe once or twice in my life. <laughs> so that would probably be a non thing for me, but a good thing to know about. So what if I wanted to edit my shortcuts? Like, uh, let's say I didn't like the X being cut. Maybe I'm used to shortcut where I want the letter S instead. Well, I can go up here and click on the little burger menu and add a custom shortcut group. And then just call it something like my shortcuts. Hit OK. And then we can come down here and, and of course you don't have to create a group. You could leave it in default if you want, but if you just kind of want it in your own group in case, uh, you know, you host things up really bad, <laughs> you can just have my shortcuts. And then all the keyboard shortcuts that have a little gear here, you can change. I have no idea why 
these guys here are hard coded in. To me, that seems kind of weird. I mean, as a programmer, it's nothing to assign a keyboard shortcut. So what, three seconds to make those editable? But for some reason, you can't change those. And that I really don't get. And here, you can't change these either. I don't know what the logic is. That, that would be nice to know what the logic is, or at least make them changeable. Because if you wanted to change any of these, you can't. <laughs> but you can change other ones. For me, that's kind of strange. Hmm. But anyway, so if I wanted to change my cut here, I just click on the gear, and then I would just select S on the keyboard, and then it changes here to S. Now, whenever I cut, I would use the letter S instead of X. But I'm gonna stay with the default because I've gotten used to the X now, so that'll just confuse me. And then I'll be like, what? So yeah, back to X. And so I'm gonna close out of here. And those were the major things that I just kind of had to adjust to. The other thing is, I like this over here on the side. You got all your effects and everything here. So we got our alpha, artistic, audio. And the audio I particularly like because before I start editing, I can go on here and just hit the normalize and just drag that over the entire track and it'll normalize all my audio. And I really like that. So typically when I'm editing here in Flowblade, the first thing I do before I do anything is I go to the audio, grab this normalize and just kind of drag it down. And when you drag it in there, then you'll have this little icon, little black dot with a white dot in it or something. <laughs> but anyways, that's an indicator to show that you have a filter applied in here. And so now we have our normalized audio applied to this guy. So the audio is all normalized. The audio all the way across the board is normalized before I do any cuts. Otherwise you gotta come up here and just kinda add them in. But you can also, if you're right adjacent to a clip, you can right click, select clone filters. And in this case from previous clip. And then as you can see it normalized here. Although there's no audio in this clip. So, <laughs> so that's kind of redundant. But if I wanted it in this clip or this clip, same thing. Just go over here, clone filters from next clip, and it'll bring it over. And again here, now you can't select two. If I, if I were to select multiple ones and then do that, see, you can't do it. So there's really no way to apply that to multiple, only one at a time. So you would have to go all the way through there to apply that normalization to everything. That's why you want to kind of normalize it from the beginning. Yeah, just so you know, you can carry those on from previous clips. And you got tons of filters. So this is your category selector here. And you got audio, you got audio filters. If you want to add any kind of effects in here, like equalization and flange and your high pass, noise gate, hit scaler, reverb, signal shifter, vinyl effect. Uh, there's just tons of stuff you can choose from. And then you got your video filters. And then you got all these other things, distort, color effect, fade in, fix, movement, transform. Yeah, lots to choose from. V-Sync, Wave, Perspection. Waves would actually be kind of fun. So a ton of things to choose from. Really cool. And Alpha is the default here. So you can set your opacity and wipe and all kinds of things like that. And those are basically, I don't do anything super fancy when I'm editing. So these are basically all the things that I just kind of go through when I create videos is titling and occasional transitions, fade out, copying and pasting and dragging files and bringing in media. Yeah, I mean, this is something that works really great overall. It never has crashed on me in the middle of doing anything. One thing in Shotcut and Caden Live, you have your libraries where you can just kind of keep your stuff all the time, like say your intro and your outro and all, all those other little clips that you might use every time you open a clip. I didn't really see any way to do that here in Flowblade. So either I'm just missing it and it's in there somewhere. I haven't really researched it. If there's a way to do it, then my bad. But I haven't found an obvious way to access a library that's just there every time I open it when I want to do a project. So what I ended up doing was I just created a 
folder in my videos folder and in that subfolder I just have all my little clips that I use all the time so I just load that folder every time I do a clip that's kind of my workaround but if any of you guys out there know about that and if there's a library feature just let me know that would, I'd really be interested but as far as I know there's no way to do that and if there is a way I would guess it might have something to do with these bins, but I don't think these, I think these bins are really project specific and not really universal. <laughs> so I don't know. Again, that's something I would need more education in if there is a library type feature. But as of now, I'm not aware of any. So that would be nice. That would be nice to have like a library feature where you can just kind of keep your clips. I think in Shotcut, it's, they have a history over here. Kaden Live has the library, but overall, I gotta tell you, Flowblade has really been a pleasure to work with. I'm really comfortable in it, and even though it took me a little bit to try to figure out how to do things, because at first it didn't seem intuitive to me, and I think it was because I was trying to think of it in the same way you think of Kaden Live and Shotcut, or maybe some other video editor. However, when I kind of let that go and I just kind of opened my mind and decided just to kind of approach it as a complete noob who's never used a software before, then everything just kind of fell into place a lot quicker and it just made a lot of sense. And I found a couple of tutorials out there that kind of got me started too, so that always helps. <laughs> And so with that, I got to say, I'm going to keep using Fullblade for a while and just kind of see how it goes. So far, it's been about a week and I really like it. The only thing that really threw me a loop for, for a while was the fade out. With that fade out of the noise, I was starting to think, oh man, I'm going to have to render the video and then load it into Shotcut and just put a fade out in there and then re-render it again. <laughs> But then it didn't take me long to figure out that I could simply mute that and then we were good to go. Flowblade is easy to use, it's lightweight. I guess the only downside is if you're a Windows user or a Mac user, you can't use Flowblade because it's only available in Linux. So it's strictly a Linux project and nothing else. I don't think you can even get it in FreeBSD. So Linux only, that's uh, the downside if you're not a Linux user. So you want to keep that in mind. However, if you are a Linux user and you want something different, maybe in the past you used a different software like uh, Final Cut Pro. I think Final Cut Pro is a little bit like this where you can do your drag and cuts at the same time. And there's some other softwares too, probably. And there's a lot of good ones out there, but my favorite open source definitely is Caden Live, Shotcut, and now Flowblade. So Flowblade has been added to my arsenal and may even become my daily editor. Time will tell. And with that, I'm going to go off and carve myself a cubic shaped bowling ball and get it to roll just as good as a spherical one. And yes, I hope this video was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to leave that thumbs up and hit subscribe. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.